G'day guys, welcome to the Mailbag, previewing a uh, fat meeting at Randwick and a really, really strong meeting at Caulfield, uh, where we hope the track races well. We've got good weather leading into the Caulfield meeting. We're back to the Blue Diamond Day rail position, so uh, let's pray to all the gods, including Buddha and Allah and Jesus, and Jesus' grandson, that it all pans out well enough for us at both tracks. On Is that too much? It's Jesus' grandson. Yeah. It's PVL. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if we want to say that on this show. Whatever. Keep going. <clears throat> um, yeah, so really big cards on the weekend. Uh, track play is going to be key because we've got big fields at both meetings. We're going to start at Randwick. We're going to do races five, seven, and eight. Those races, their names are Peter. Champagne yep. Stakes. They're all age stakes in the hall, mate. Hallmark Stakes. I'm not Peter. Yes, they Pistol. Uh, Scooty. Um, yeah, then we're going to head to Caulfield and Cor at Caulfield Scooter. What race are we going to do at Caulfield? Four, five, six. Four, five, and six at Caulfield. So get your pens out and get ready. And also this week, punters, big news. Both these boys are launching their own products, so they'll be accountable. Uh, late mail betting advice. Pistols is going to be called the Pistol Gropers. Now, <laughs> it's a fitting name for the man from the West. That that's the Groper reference. Sand Groper. Yeah, yeah, Sand Groper. Nothing to do with how it behaves socially at all. It's to do with the Western Australian reference from where Peter is from. Uh, your product will basically be a mover style product. Some of the bets will come throughout a day as if it was sort of a mounting yard product, but it'll be all in one. Yeah, you'll so get you might, everything. You might want to see how Randwick's playing on Saturday yeah. before you make a couple of decisions. Yeah. Um, so if you want to get involved with that, head to themailbag.com.au or probably easier for you head to the app still head to the app they'll be uh, sorted out for the weekend download the app there's a list of products there um, you all know Pete you've seen him for a long enough time to know he's got good ability get around him and support him and Scooty's launching a a winter carnival package so it's a short term product yeah we'll just see how we go there's a fair bit going on but uh, I'm betting every Saturday at Doombin seriously. Eagle Farm wherever we are at the metro meeting in Queensland. Yep. Scoot's been providing that service for free for the last month and a half, uh, yeah. ever since the COVID-19 sort of hit us. Probably, yeah, probably four weeks. Yeah, and it's been really strong, really solid. Um, obviously, Shane will be helping with that, like Scoot helps a lot with Shane stuff. So the, the Queensland boys will be doing their thing, but Scoot's product will be a metro product. Shane's product is a provincial product. Um, and. Pete's will be focusing on Western Australian racing and New South Wales racing. Wherever I like. So he'll be pinching some of my stuff. We bet out wide at Musselbrook the other day. Got a winner. Yep. That'll be now be Pete's. And um, I'll be covering everywhere else, I guess. But mainly Victoria. So get on board and support us. Powered by punningformula.com.au, which we all use and you should too. And bettingwithbetfair.com.au. Let's start at Rearwick, boys. Race number five is the... The all-aged... No, it's the uh, the champagne steaks. That one. <laughs> They're all the same thing. Mm. We've got King's Legacy is a very short price favourite. We're still yeah. gonna do the synthetic holds. Or yeah. Not to you. Good, fine, sweet. There it is. Here comes uh, a speed map. Brought yep. to you by punningform.com.au. You can get a, a punning form subscription. And you can make your own speed maps and adjust them through the day. You can highlight positive and negative runners on that map. Come what on. are you thinking here, Pete? Oh, I think probably the place to start is rail seven metres. Now, I've only found one meeting in the last two years with rail seven. So I've sort of overlaid that against rail six, what I would expect with that. I think rails and run would be suited on Saturday. And by obviously race five will have a good indication of that. King's Legacy for me, it's clearly got the best form in the race. It's got a weak SP and it had every favour last start and won the prize. Uh, I can't have it as short as what it is at the moment. I think that price will start a bit longer. Old Kirk clearly wasn't suited, but I'm not sure it'll be suited there on Saturday once more. I thought Holyfield and Untamed were the two that looked to be suited and probably look a decent little Dutch bet there in, in race five. It's often a race scoop. We spoke about this earlier. It can throw up a few little weird results, but mm -hmm. I think those two horses on speed and more than likely going to draw or find the fence, they're the ways I was leaning in race five. Angle finder? Yeah. When I watched the uh, the size last start, I thought they're going very slow and this is just a Mickey Mouse race. So combine that with the heavy back to probably a good track. I think it's a soft at the moment. 
29 degrees today and it just looks like sunshine on the forecast, I'd expect some big form reversals. There'll be better tempo and then horses sort of get found out um, at this age when they jump up to 1600 metres. I thought from a, a fitness perspective, Old Kirk was the one that I wanted to be with. Uh, gets Berry off, uh, J-Mac on. Um, I'm a bit worried with um, Pete's notes about the track pattern. That's very frightening, but if Old Kirk stays hard in the market, that's the horse that I really want to be with. Yeah, I, I thought that um, King's Legacy is a, an enormous lay of anything up to $3 just off its SP profile mm. and how it was blessed in run last start and it's not really done anything previously to, to make me respect it at all. I'm really happy to be against it. I want to see how the track's playing but I think not an option will run a good race. I'm worried where it will land in run and probably be asked to do a little bit too much. Has settled on speed previously in New Zealand so but whether can, or not Just convince like. King's Legacy is a massive lay here. Yeah, it has to be. Uh, mm. We head to race seven, boys, which is called the the all aged stakes <laughs> it's over 400 meters we've got a lot of horses here coming from the uh tj smith oh this is a juicy little little setup pistol take it away yeah i'm really keen to whack here as you said comes from the tj had starting price over horses like pierrata center and elaine as well as to fame and um for me, at gate four, I'm sure they'll show more intent than what they did last start, where they showed no intent. It recorded just a massive split from the 400 to the 200, and... Splits don't get much, or... Yeah. I've never seen one that big or yeah. yeah. especially in a group race. Exactly. And I might look, see it off like a real walk tempo at, yeah. at a shitty meeting with a decent horse, but to do it on, on a big day... Yeah. Pretty impressive. It's got good figures at the track. It's run and won at the distance before. It won the Golden Rose, defeating Yes, 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 and Exceedance. And both of those horses were flying at the time. It looks to put itself into the first four, maybe the first six, if a few of those horses drawn wide come across and really challenge for the lead. But either way, I think that suits the horse. And look, for me, it's a clear bet to feign someone I'll be saving on because it's just been recording some really nice splits as well. And again, gate five probably sits forward at midfield. Don't know what Pirata does. Gate nine, it's just a bit sticky. They'll need to make a decision there early. Scooty? Yeah, I'm not getting off Pirata just yet. I didn't think, you know, sometimes when those leaders control and just go the whole way, it's, again, it's sort of like a non-event type race. So I'd like to... It wasn't to... suited at all. No. And it, it was as good as anything yeah. from that sort of... Outside the first three and run there in the TJ, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think he's just... And 1,400, like, the the further it goes, this guy absolutely loves 1,400 metres. So I'm loath to sort of sack that runner completely. Um, I've got a lot of time for start of the seas. Uh, I tipped it last time at 40 to 1, and Natoya knocked me off. So I've just got over that. Uh, I really like the horse, actually. I think this is a horse that can surprise. I think it's got a lot of class, and it would be a knockout runner for me. What about the setup? Well, the angle, you are the angle man here, mm. right? Fierce impact, first up 400 metres. Like it? It's not a horse that ever really runs a bad race. Yeah, I sort of like it off a 35-day break, and I think this is its distance range, for sure. I think it's 1,400, yeah, it's go, despite running some good races, probably under what handicap conditions at 1,600 at Caulfield. And no well, public trials. Yeah, I like that. And Todd Marcon's riding as good as anyone. Um, can't believe that he's talking about going home to Ireland. Just seems mind-blowing, given the races are still on here, but he's probably got more money than the King and can afford to do nothing and probably craving a Guinness. We've got Mountain Goat here, so I don't know why you wouldn't want to stay in Australia and keep riding, keep doing your job in these sort of uncertain times. Like, you just, the you just don't know goals. what's going to happen. But, um, yeah, they, they were the ways I was playing. I'd, I'd prefer Star of the Seas um, stepping up in distance rather than coming back from 1,600. Uh, but Waller's, Waller's a master at horses coming back from 2,000 metres to 1,600. And if he wanted to map this horse to, to you know, to come back to 1,400, he's... He's probably done nothing with the horse. So that's that's one of the horses, Star of the Seas, that I just think it's got a lot more ability than people recognise. Well, I think Pete's made some great points at Bivouac. Uh, it looks like it's going to get the right run here. I concur with Pirata and Pete, like suggested on the Pathway show about a Pirata for the TJ, a, a much bigger odds than it started. And I, I do like following my money when I think it was the right bet at the time. Mm. If it was a different shape of race, I think we were on the right horse. 
but I'm not 100% sure we're going to get the right shape here again. I prefer it was drawn just a little bit softer for Tommy. Um, Tefane, I, we've been big on Tefane mm. since around uh, down the new market, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's too shorty. I agree. Like it's it can well win, but it's just price like it's, it's what 26 a few weeks. Yeah, ago like if it's it twenty dollars, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 yep, yeah, I'm supporting your yeah. view. But ten dollars, mm. like. For me, that, yeah, that's why it's only a save for me. It's not a, it's not a bet to win anything. It's just purely the chop. Fierce impact scares the shit out of me. It just sort of never mm. seems to run poorly. A, a big sort of sprint and dash, four hundred meters up the, up that little camber at Randwick was. It's hard to see it not like savaging the line. If it gets the right sort of run, which with that rider it probably will. I think the race is a bit sort of avoidable if you don't want to launch into a sort of one horsey. Which I, I think I'm going to let it go. Next race, boys, is race number eight, which is... Don't know what it's called. The Hallmark Stakes. <laughs> Kementari's back, Peter. There's the synthetic hold. Up comes the speed map. Um, Kementari... Great run last start. The way, the yeah. way, yeah, the way I look at races and review them, this is just a bet every day of the week, next start. And he gets probably rails in run, as Pete's alluded to, going to be a spot to be. Yeah, gate three, I think they'll be able to show some intent there. Again, just another horse that wasn't really suited against how the day was unfolding there. And it's kind of helpful when you do get those bias tracks, whether it's, you know, wind or track itself. But it just means you can go back through your, with your punning form database and just make a few notes. And that was one that I just had there next to Kementari. Good return, not suited versus day. And... Look again, we've mentioned a few times there's some of those late splits and it's recorded just a really strong six to four, four to two, two to the finish and what do you think the market boxes. does with it? I think it's a horse that's either gonna start like three dollars or nine. I think it'll probably firm. Hmm. I think a lot of its rivals, like you look at Deprive, Trekking, they're going to be back in the last three, four. And if there's any on pace advantage or any, I guess, settling rearward disadvantage, like I think there will be, uh, I think it will firm those couple of gallopers will drift I think the one at really big odds that I just didn't really know what to make of it but I'll have to have something on anyway is Cesar um, it goes from the Hawk stable to the Ma Usta stable yeah and obviously Ma Usta's are flying it's had the one trial up and uh, up on the Gold Coast and now they've brought it down so I wonder if it's been spelling up in Queensland we've seen some horses just elevate off that setup previously so that's a sneaky one at 20 to 1 or so that you can have something on to to have a bit of a profit there as well. Yeah, if you remember back, it, it was rock hard in the market first up in a good race at Caulfield, I think, last preparation for the Hawks team. And it was slaughtered. Mm. Yeah, I'll try, Yeah, I'll just probably muddy the waters a bit further here. I think it's a very competitive race. Uh, the horses that I really liked is trekking back onto a dry surface. I think it doesn't go in the on the heavy whatsoever. It's done nothing wrong. Again, it's drawn barrier 12, so it's got its work cut out. I agree with Kementari, gets a good spot. Deprive's another one that I've got a lot of time for. The horses I want to be against are probably In Her Time and Grey Worm. Um, I think they've either found their grade or not in form. Um, you can figure out and probably make sense of who I mean there. All Two Royals, a horse who's super honest. Bad draw here, but gets boss. Nice switch there, and back to the Sydney way of going. I think it's a big improver. And Cesar, again, I like the fact that um, it's got a new stable, tried okay at the Gold Coast as well uh, for a race like this. So, yeah, I think it's um, a very, very deep, deep, deep race. The, and there's a horse here that... The um, market should tell the story with the Go Dolphin run runners, yeah. whichever one firms. Now, I, I suspect Trekking's going to be the one that they, they come for. I think Deprive will drift, but I'm not saying it can't win. Interesting horse for me is All Too Royal. If it was drawn inside, I'd want to be with it, but I'm happy to be against it, given what Pete's saying about the track. I think Kevin Stary will start sort of 3.50, and I think it'll win. Um, let's head to Caulfield, boys, where we're going to talk about races. I've forgotten, but I know them all. Four, five, race, and six. I yeah, think. four, five, six. Race four is over the 2,000 metres. Mr. Quickie comes here from Sydney, where it was pretty good late. I think it clocked the 10th fastest last 200 metres of the day in the Doncaster. Ridden by G. Schofield. The GOAT, D. Oliver, gets back on board here. It was pretty solid in a good race. This looks pretty weak. Is it just a moral? Yes. Oh, I'm not going to be playing. I think, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think you know, the slight concern, heavy back to a drier surface, and obviously the 
it's, it's just Chook Lotto at the moment mm. with the Caulfield track. There's been much said about it. We don't know what's going to happen, but over these longer distance races anyway, I think um, track bias isn't as big a factor. 100% agree. So mm. once you sort of get out past 1,600 metres, I sort of throw that in the bin. People sort of get sucked into leaders. Um, that said, though, the, there was an exception the other day. P found envelope last week or whenever it was. It feels like three weeks ago, but mm. that was a that well, was a funny was, one. It was two weeks ago and last week. Yeah, well, it was 2,400 back to 2,000 metres, but... We had more, like as much rain as when Noah had the ark, and then and all of a sudden it was, it was a perfect setup. It was covered in it. waves. Yeah. Like it would be sunny here and yeah. going sideways down the bay for me, and Corfield was in between us. In, in then that. It'd be raining here and sunny there. And in that scenario, that's probably when you want to be on a leader, and then you want to be on that tough stay that's going to run out the two oh, hundred meters strong. Scooty. Yeah, so Pete got a little bit lucky there. Um, <laughs> He obviously had a look at the weather report and, and nailed that, but I think Mr. Quick is the one that he just he's just an obvious obvious bet here. He's just got class all over these these runners. I, I think you're right, but if this is a, if this is at Flemington, I'd take a dollar fifty. True. But at Caulfield, this is the same rail position as Blue Diamond. I don't need to I don't need to get involved in this race. I think he'll win. Mm. Well, you don't need a bet now anyway. You can just wait till the last five minutes. You would have had previous three races there for a bit of intel. He might be. There's he, a lot of. He might be dollar forty by then. I think it's a no bet. It's easy. There's a lot of shorties. There's there's Night Orp up in Brisbane. There's Rubisaki. Rubisaki. Rubisaki in. Um, Mad Puller. Yeah, in Randwick, and then you've got this horse. So, a lot of these. Let's check that These will get these will get uh, truckloaded. These horses. And I can't see why they wouldn't truckload this one. He's he's going really well. There's no excuse. Oh, he wasn't suited and like went as good as he possibly could, given the way he jumped and the barrier and the track mm. at Caulfield in the All Star Mile. Uh, wasn't suited and savaged the line. Biggest the switch of all time at uh, Randwick in the Doncaster. Now, yeah, goes from Glen to to, to, to Ollie, small field, class runner, should be winning. What's the next race we're doing? Race five. Race five. The Golden Mile. The Golden Mile. I thought this was pretty simple, and I, but the market doesn't, so I'll, I'll need to hear what you two think. But I'll, I'll go first here. Sosi Bond was very good at Bendigo, or good enough. He loomed to win last week and just doesn't get 2,000. Agree. Gets a bit of gear, on the quick backup, drawn inside, gets Mark Zara. Please, Mark, can show some intent. I think it's a moral. I can't believe it went up 750. I think it will start sort of $4 or shorter. And kill these horses. Hmm. I think Kubik will be ridden colder than it needs to be from that wide gate, that stable. Mamzel Test always runs well. Goldfields was too bad to be true at Bendigo, but you can't back it off that. Uh, Mahatma Deus will be back too far back. Armadeus, they try to put into the race and it shit itself, so I think they'll be a bit colder on it. I can't see how Sosibon isn't in the first six, one off the fence, like three back, one off. Beneteau, they had to roll forward the way the track player the other day, mm. and it was probably the undoing of the horse. But I, I, to be critical of uh, the way Ollie rode that horse, I, I think if he sat cold on it and it didn't let down, it would have been a, a much severe bake, much more severe bake from like the the smaller punter. I, I, it's got to go back from this draw to on Saturday with the, with the not many scratchings. Same with Street Chief. Iconoclasm. Maybe, but it's probably, I prefer a 400. Although it's peak figure is over the mile, but that's at Flemington. I just can't see how, so. I'm so happy to be with Sosie Bond at $7. I think it's a great bet. Yeah, like obviously the connections of Kubrick will be disappointed dropping back. You know, he's a Bondi stakes winner. This is obviously a million dollar an race, and now he's racing, he's running around for 200000 Well, it's an afterthought, isn't it? <laughs> Well, he's had, he's had his grand final, and this is definitely not it. Well, the Bondi stage will probably never be on again either. You know what? You know what? Like, has no one joined the dots? Can people see what's going on here? Do you know why PVL's pushing so hard to get hug the league back on? Because the clock's ticking. Because what's funding these prize money increases? It's clearly not racing. Racing's, Sports betting. Racing wagering scooter is going through the, through the roof. It is. Because there's nothing else to do but bet on the ponies. Not on the tote, though. 
Well, there was an article on racing.com today and Giles Thompson was saying how much, you know, how they're cutting back on all the all the prize money and because, jobs are getting because lost. Because racing because prize money relies upon sports wagering. Through so the joint venture. the sooner we get rugby, rugby league back and oh, AFL oh. back, the sooner the Bondi states can be back up to whatever it's worth. Exactly. To get back onto the race, sorry, I digress. I'm not sure what to do with Kubrick. That was my point. <laughs> I, just went, <laughs> I just went a long way around saying, saying it. I just think you've got to just assume... Wide draw Waller sneaks to last. <laughs> yeah. Surely not good enough. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I tell you what, Waller nearly pulled off Saber Cool last week. He likes, you know, taking a good Ins- one. Inside draw. Inside draw. Down, down there was there. an inside draw. It was a little, little pipe smoking rod. I love the fact that Jack's backing another Mark Zara. This is all right. It's Mark, it's Mark it, everywhere. It's absolutely frightening for him. I, lo- I agree with all of Jack's points. The form around Sosie Bon is enormous. I think only a bad ride will get it beat. I think O'Connorclasm... But as we saw on O'Con- Saturday at Caulfield, he's capable of doing that. Exactly. Everyone's capable Profits of a bad day. Last offence. That's a great position and, to and be. And you shouldn't be talking about it on Twitter if a jockey has a bad day because everyone's human. Now, <laughs> Iconoclasm was absolutely PR'd last start. I can't have it at the price. A horse like Manziel Tess is good enough... To measure up here, yeah, off the fresh, doesn't, doesn't run bad races. The, the Bam's on fire form, uh, certainly Frank Floyd. there. Mahama Deus, I can see it improving. Noel Callow sticks, gets a drier track. I think they're both positives uh, for that horse. What about Moret? I was interested in what you'd say about it. Is that the Archie Alexander? Yeah. Archie Alexander horse. Uh, I don't know where it's at. I think it could be gone as a horse, but. I, you know, I think last start is probably a forgive. Jordan Childs is a slight positive, but I'm not sure. I, I think like the play here it just gets stuck into this seven dollar seven fifty Sosie bond. Mm. It's going to start shorter, surely. I'd say that. Then, but then there's going to be horses that come out in the market, and you can start to go. Like if Benatoy wins at ten dollars, I'm going to. I'm not going to be well mentally. Mm. Chop it. Uh, Kubrick like, These sort of horses Are going to get out Yeah There's I no profile For them to be back to you Benetoit's another one That's like It's past It's like grand final It was it Had a, a week enough race Last time And couldn't get the job done I, Moret needs 2,000 metres For me mm. to, to, bat, to, to bet Yeah In, in a different sort of grade Pete I'm, like, I'm going to have something Small on no effort At 34 Yeah $31 I can't knock price it, is. it was very good Wasn't it It gets mm. Georgina Cartwright To Dwayne Dunn from gate five, he can just put the horse wherever he wants. Yeah, yeah, it was a good first start. Nice little splits going towards the line. Unpopular trainer, so you're getting your yep. big price. Yeah, can't yep. bag it at all. And it, it's, <coughs> it's gone from like maiden grade straight up to benchmark ninety and come out and run well, huge. I don't know how many times they've combined either, but this yeah. stat I remember it and I just found it. The trainer and D Dunn, A E Cooper, they got sixty seven point seven percent. Oh. Bit of letter there, there. there you go. It beat Ocean X last prep. I mean, I, yeah, I, I like Ocean yeah. X this I remember, weekend. I remember the Sydney. horse. Uh, you so. know what else he likes the horse? Have a guess. Silks. I don't even know. They're leopardy. Know. They're leopard silks. They're a little bit leopard print. I didn't even notice that, but that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> What's oh. the next race we're talking about, Pistol? Don't know. Race six. Race six, <laughs> punters. This is the, the showdown. The showdown. And last I'm, year, one boy. That good horse, Toronado, that went to Honkers. Got we, me. we backed it on debut. It took four forty at Pakenham on the grass. <laughs> it started at dollar sixty. It ambled up. Ben Mellon was riding it. It just ambled up, and it was just like TB's calling. It's like get in the queue, and it fucking didn't let down. Then it went to Bendigo. Started eight dollars fifty, and Mick D rode it, and he was just trying to fucking hold on to it. And it pissed in. Then it won the showdown. Then off to Honkers. Hmm. I, I, I was only on when it lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking spewing. Was Sartorial Splendor in the showdown last year? No, I can't recall, mate. I barely know. It seems like a lifetime. I feel like ago. I fell into a sad horse this time last year. I mean, a lot happened since then. So there this is, is the there's, tw- a, there's a Saddler set up here too. Punish, by the way. 1,200 metre, two-year-old race, 855,000. That's a lot of prize money. I'm sure it's worth it. I think it's a wide open market here. The horse that I liked on debut was Chrome Angel. Gets Willow. 
if that was just a barrier trial at Bendigo that day, I'm very keen on this horse and think it will go ultra, ultra close. The other horse that I liked and tried to find an angle with in a very difficult race is Galactic Fury. So it's got the crossover noseband on for the first time and being gelded, it's done most of its racing up in Sydney against some pretty smart horses. So that was the horse at big odds that I find typically. Yeah, look, I like two horses here, but one mainly. Um, I think the race is full of average horses who are very easy to bet around. Like I, I just can't, and I've done this, I did this, this took me the longest time to do this race of the whole card. Uh, I didn't force it, I patiently went through it and I was like, okay, you can't back here, you can't back that. Like River Knight probably looks the most likely to me of those inside the market, but it is drawn 12. She needs to use it up to get across. Last year this race was, they went hard early. Um, right down the bottom at $100, number eight, number nine, he's a commander. Uh, Sadler trained, Mick D rides. It was half a barrier trial it's only start like it wouldn't be surprised to like every horse be set up for this race mm. it'll improve there was enough in its in its run to suggest it's going to run a decent race I'm not saying i'm not confident it wins but i'm confident 101 is a good enough price to have something on it and then right down the bottom there's three horses trained by uh robbie griffiths who haven't raced and have all trialed and there's one horse ridden uh, by the Kira Mar stable. Now, of the three Robbie Griffiths horses, believe it or not, Mark Zara rides one. <laughs> now, this thing's had three trials that are so strong and solid that I'm happy enough to, to have a really good crack at this horse at $15. It is number... Uh, 18. Number 18, Hal Voyer. Yep. Uh, go watch its trials. Most of them are at Cranbourne. I think all of them might have been at Cranbourne. It's in the same silks as uh, Hal Vorson. Uh, don't know if it's related or, or care. Um, Could be. I just love the trials. And when I don't love anything else here, I'm, I think $15 is a spoil. I wouldn't be surprised if it went right off because I don't see what else the market's going to find here. And it's drawn inside and the trials it showed good speed. It's very hard to tell from a trial if they can take that tactical speed to a race. But if it's cleanly away, I can't see how it's not in the sort of first half of the field at least. It's a big red alert. Mm. Whatever they back in this race is short. Like they're the ones that you want to be with. Yeah, I, I just couldn't. I, I've backed this horse and I'll probably go again if I still get the price. But um, yeah, I just couldn't push in anything that's raced in this race except for Saddlers, which is a hundred to one. Anything? Yeah, it's a bit of a sticky race. I sort of. Half found River Knight, half found Tarkula Diva, and half found that uh, Koekeko or Koekeko. But that Tarkula, okay. Tarkula, whatever it is, has an enormous SP last yeah. start and was blessed yeah. in run. Exactly. It, there's, it's a really iffy looking race. I'll be. I think River Knight. River Knight's the most responsible way yeah. to wager if you want to get stuck in the same at the shorter end of the market. It may also be like a half decent in play bet. Back at SP after they jump, if there's positive. A positive ride, bit of intent. Yep. Yep. Anything else? No. Okay, so best value and lay at Caulfield, boys. And My so value, we'll Sydney. Yeah, we'll do. I was going to do both. No, oh, I haven't. I haven't got that many both. I'll do both. My best, my best value at Caulfield is race six, number eighteen, Hal Voyer. My best is race five, number whatever, Sosu Bonnie's. Um, you could even back race five number three you could back it each way it's still big odds what price is it right now seven bucks or something seven dollars and fifty cents you got a bet Uh, I'll come back to you with a lay Peter what do you got Uh, best is at Randwick which is race seven number eleven bivouac and the best lay for me will go back to earlier in the card which is race six shared ambition um, I just can't have it at the current price at $2.60. Not sure if that would be mythical come jump time, but I suspect it might be. Best value, I'll go to race four at Randwick, and I'm not really willing to lay quick thinker, but I'm going to have something on Chuck Luck, the Victorian going up for the Buston and Young team. Gets a few little positives there. So I think Chuck Luck in race four at Randwick is my best value. 
Cool. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, my lay, I'll, I'll go probably the reverse way around. I think Quick Think is very short at $2. I think you, if you want to back it, back it late. But I couldn't have it at uh, even money in race four. I think Rubisaki will win again. I know it's very short, but she, she's just putting holes in fields, and she has. She's been... What, she's run five in a row, and every time that she steps out, she's just been overpriced. So I can't see anything beating her again uh, this weekend. So I'll just keep following my money with her, and I think the best roughy or the best sort of value bet is definitely Star of the Seas. In, you know, I think it's a big chance to, to surprise at 50 to 1. Big price. My players in Sydney, I think that uh, Kemantari is the best bet up there. Uh, race <laughs> eight, number two. What, did someone already do that? No, yeah. it's just funny. Um... <laughs> I think King's Legacy, race five, number one, is one of the greater layers of, the, of this year. Um, I think in race four, you could back chuck like and also that Canane. Yeah, Canane. I think they're yeah. both going to run good races at double figures. Looks about rock bottom. No, I think it'll drift. They're, they're the two roughies I like up there. Yep. That's us. Good. Good luck on the weekend. <laughs>